Greetings, it is I, Dr. Arnold Tremont, and this is typically the case. I am live with 58 and BBC Becky. Uh, say hello to the audience, 58. Hello everyone. How are you today? Welcome to the SCP Foundation's official live stream, where we delve into the strange and unusual. Today, we have with us Director Architer Labs, the esteemed authority on all matters SCP, and BBC Vatten, our resident historian and archivist. Let's dive into the world of the anomalous. That wasn't a bad intro, except for the fact I must stress, mostly for my own safety, that we are not the official SCP podcast. The Foundation has not explicitly endorsed absolutely anything I've ever done. And that's fine, because the less attention the Foundation pays to me personally, the, the better. Not, not that I'm really at risk. I'm not paranormal, really. Super science is a different field. Strictly speaking, we can prove that everything we're doing here isn't paranormal. Unlike some people. We won't get into it. Suffice to say, I, I just don't want to uh, get in trouble with Foundation. Who would... Uh, feel free to read the audience like Vigi Uh I would typically trade off on reading, uh, if you don't mind. I'll just ask you for your commentary at the end of the SCP. Or we could just be silent throughout. That's fine too. But they're totally there. I'm not hallucinating this. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. Just a moment to get... Uh... Well, there we go. You heard it too. Clearly not swamp gas reflecting off of the moon, or something along those lines. What was it the uh, spooks like to claim about anything that Terrible. you weren't supposed to have seen? Today we are reviewing SCP-2026-100. That, that is correct. We're starting off with 2686. When 2686 is done, anyone in the audience is welcome to make a request for the next SCP. If there is no request for the next SCP, I have an additional two files to lean into after that. In addition, we're rattling off a game again, thanks to the generous Exodus. This time it is Neo 2 or Nio 2. I don't know, it's very Asian, and I have no confidence in my ability to pronounce it correctly. But I'll be playing the trailer for that, and then as people register to join the raffle for the game, determine who gets the Steam key for the game itself. So, first things first, greetings in chat to Assassin of the Grey. Thank you very much for your promotional efforts, compensating for my shortcomings on that point. Snippies 100, greetings. Welcome, Kishol, JTRW, um, and Gan N. I believe Havenhand might be in there somewhere, at least they were elsewhere. Possibly other people. Any case, greetings. Hope you enjoy the stream. Starting with 2686 Object Class Euclid, Special Containment Procedures. Due to its static and distant nature, complete containment of SP 26861 and subsequently SP 2686 is not at this time feasible. However, as a result of SP-26861's proximity to outpost Thoth-1, observation equipment has been located near SP-26861 and personnel are to observe the area for any significant change in conditions or unusual behavior on the part of SCP-2686. Additionally, personnel from outpost Thoth-1 are to travel via assigned rover to SP-26861 on a weekly basis in order to evaluate the status of SP-2686. All images captured of SP-26861 by non-foundation organizations are to be edited in accordance with security regulation document Thoth-1-F. SCP-2686 is an adult male human, estimated to be approximately 75 years of age, although probably much, much older. Currently located at a redacted site within the Mare Imbrim on lunar surface, this location is designated as SCP-26861, and is detailed below. SB-2686 is itself not visibly biologically anomalous, though it has claimed in past interviews to possess anomalous capabilities, primarily those generally assigned in Welsh traditions originating in the early Middle Ages as belonging to a magician or wizard. These anomalous abilities include the ability to travel large distances instantaneously, 
the ability to project energy towards a target, the ability to transform its body at will into the shape of various animals, and several others. None of the abilities have at any point been observed by Foundation personnel. SP-2686, as has, as of the time of this writing, only been seen to wear a single blue-green robe of coarse wool and a small grey nightcap. SP-2686 is also known at all times to carry a moderately sized 85-90 cm piece of oak wood, which uses a walking cane. The entity will respond to most lines of inquiry, but will not answer any questions regarding its origins or nature in a direct manner, instead attempting to change the line of discussion to subjects of religion, mythology, folklore, philosophy, or historical events, both anomalous and mundane. The entity acts in a non-hostile manner when interviewed, but will refuse any suggestions by Foundation personnel that it leave SP-26861. SP-26861 is a spherical area of a radius of 45 meters located at a redacted point on the lunar surface. I can relate immensely. That's, that's my life right there. The area has been reported by SCP-2686 to possess an atmosphere identical to that of Earth, but this cannot be confirmed to the nature of the region. Objects which enter the area of SCP-26861 are immediately transported to the opposite side of the region without interacting with the intervening space. SCP-2686 has reported that this effect does not persist on the inside of SCP-26861, the area encompassed by SCP-26861 contains a large amount of soil and grass, along with various trees, primarily oak and ash, as well as a small residential uh, residence constructed of a mixture of wood, thatch, and stone. The exact architecture of the structure does not specifically match any styles found on Earth, although the design is in line with what would be required by a single person living in a rural area. SP-2686 has at several points been observed to produce food from within the structure, including fresh meats and fruits, which could not reasonably have been acquired in the area or stored for the amount of time which SP-26861 has been under observation. When questioned about this, SP-2686 has claimed that said food was acquired by a cat apparently named Commodore Buckles, which SP-2686 referred to as its animal companion. This entity has at no time been observed by Foundation personnel, or by the autonomous observation equipment. Meats noted by observers to consist of various livestock and reported by SP-2686 to also include gazelle, caribou, blue whale, and griffin. And here we have our first interview with the rather famous Moon Wizard. Uh, I called Dibs on the role of Moon Wizard. Richard Patton, if you'd like to take the role of um, the interviewer, it's it's an option I'm offering. That. Just a moment. Uh, no obligation. Conversely, greetings in chat to Brain Chatter. Anyone else who might have snuck in when I wasn't looking? It's okay. But you didn't have to sneak in the first place. Go on. Interview. Agent redacted for a word. As part of the initial containment. Well, Oh. The Foundation personnel were tasked with interviewing the entity in an attempt to establish its history. The following interview was conducted by personal station at the outpost at Hot 1, three days following the discovery of SCP-2686-1. Begin work. Hello, sir. Do you mind if I ask your name? I am known as the great wizard Niperius, lord of the moon and stars above! I see. And could you describe me from where? How is it that you came and reside in the surface of the moon? You dare question me, mortal man! If you don't want to tell us, that's perfectly all right. Now, moving on. Wait, wait, wait. Just, you're giving up just like that. You don't even want to ask me for my ancient wisdom. Maybe seek the secrets of the stars and your future? Not particularly. Most just talking down to physical information. 
as this point in time. Now then, if you could provide us with your date and place of birth, we... How dare you! I would have you know that in my day I was the greatest wizard of them all! Thousands sought my wisdom and magic to help them in their noble quests! Only the most powerful could reach my ancient wizardly sanctum atop the highest mountain in the land! But still, there were too many, and I used my awesome might to transport my home to this distant land where only the truest of heart could seek my wisdom. I see. And w when would you say that this change in occasion occurred? I have lived this land for nigh on 300 years, growing in power every day. And in that time period, how many persons have you visited this place? Approximate figure would be fine. Uh, well, you see, the thing about that, there haven't actually been any, save you. Surely you've got a quest you need, Aiden, yes? Well, we could use some biological information, if that would be too much trouble. I'd hardly call oh. that a quest. Only the truest of heroes deserve my... Then would you do, you not just go back to whatever it is that you came from? I don't think you could be getting much anywhere here, do you? It is a bit out of the way, isn't it? The thing is though, I am a moon wizard after all. Yes, and... Well, that means my power is divine from the light of the moon above, you know. Right. And we are on the moon itself, after all. I see. Where the moonlight is rather... below. Hmm. Hmm. Indeed. End of vlog. Yep. It has been determined that SP-2686 in its current state poses no actual threat to the Foundation or its holdings, but steps should be taken to ensure that it does not leave the surface of the moon. Personally, I'm cheering for him to get back to Earth, maybe on top of some large mountain. I'm thinking... Even if he pulls that off, it's not like he's going to be a very hard containment threat. No, I, I can feel bad for the guy. On a bubble on the moon, forever cut off from all the rest of humanity, which he ostensibly wants to help, just not all at once. And with some quality control on who pesters them. Which, of course, is entirely alien to me as a concept. I could see it being a thing for the ultimate ultravert. Officially greetings in chat to Storm Raven and Haven. Glad you could make it. Yeah, I am. Um... What were your thoughts on... Oh, um... Right. No, it's just you, friend. I thought someone might join, but I was looking at the wrong menu. Uh, what are your thoughts on Nyperius the Great? Master of the moon and stars above. Could use a better location. I'm sure it could. He's just lucky. Mm. Primarily that, um, well, whatever he did to get there gave him yeah. enough power to keep himself fed and maintain that bubble that keeps him mm. from dying on the surface of the moon, which would typically be the case. Implying he has a uh, abilities to influence and warp the material realm. Well, Carrot, this is the first time I've seen you in chat. That's why I didn't say hello. But greetings in chat, Carrot. You, you, you're welcome to pop in here as well. 
It's not obligatory. But then you could scold me in person more directly. It could save you a lot of time there. Much more efficient. To get back to the topic, I, I yes, he, he he's a, a case study in hubris leading to the fall. Pride go at the fourth wall. He, he was on this wizardly saint on a mountain, and still he felt there were too many heroes coming to visit him, so he would just one up the top of the mountain and really badly overdid it. But if he is honest about growing in power every day he's there, well, then maybe another 600 years or so, he'll have enough power to get himself back down. Or alternatively, maybe he'll make some new friends on the moon. That aren't the Foundation. That has potential. You know, I do wish they had uh, indicated at what point they discovered Moon Wizard was there. If I knew what year it was, I'd have a much better idea. Well, it doesn't matter. I mean, clearly they couldn't have found Moon Wizard on the moon until they had space travel and had been to the moon a few times on their own. Which means... In parallel well, it can't have been that recent. I mean, they have known about him for years. But, let's say someone went to an alternate reality that is basically still in the 1950s. Humanity at that point of advancement. I'm pretty sure they didn't have an observation base called Thoth 1 in the 1950s. So, there are applications here. Uh, it's neither here nor there. Yes, probably around 1968 at least. That's not true, Haven. I don't need a wizard friend. I don't need anyone. <clears throat> uh, I'm afraid Beach Fan, you won't be able to hear 58's response to this. But I do feel I should query them before we move on. By the way, we have reached the end of this particular SCP file, which means all of you in the audience are welcome to make your requests in chat. Speaking of, are we sure that the wizard in question was not cursed by a necromancer or something? Given what? the lack of people. I suppose we could never know, but it would seem pretty clear to me that uh, Moon Wizard here fessed up to his fuck up by saying that, you know, he boldly put himself on the moon, presuming it would immediately give him all his power, but again, magic is infamous for being very, very quibbly and precise in wording. So he was the lord of the moon above, while well, now the moon's below. Not so much the power from, from that. Well, the stability of the spell depends on the caster. Apparently, he's not lying about being a very, very good caster. I mean, he did successfully put himself on the moon in a self-sufficient bubble that still keeps him fed, watered, and, you know, not dying from Indeed. exposure. And it seems he either teleport himself or open a portal to the moon. In short. That for some reason it's now closed. Okay, that summed up pretty well. Moon Wizard done played himself. Notably, this is where I differ heavily from Moon Wizard. I could totally come back if I want to, I just don't. Mm. I think 2686 could return to his reality's Earth, though. After all, he's also the master of the stars above. Well, he still has stars above him, if no longer the moon, so that's probably where he's still gaining power every day. Clearly, though, well, 300 years the hasn't gone very above far. You. The stars are above you only when you have gravity beneath you. Hmm. Well, as long as the stars above me should get some benefit. In any case, ah, 58, uh, we just covered SCP-2686, The Moon Wizard, a wizard who played himself by in his smugness and trying to make himself super exclusive council, stuck himself on the moon where he couldn't get himself back off. Wasn't that a fun file? Any commentary, 58? Let's take a moment. You won't be able to hear them, Beach Fan, just soon here. Well, on the stream, perhaps. Certainly, Director. Your summary was concise and engaging. 
highlighting the humor and absurdity of the situation without getting bogged down in details. It made me laugh, and I am sure the viewers will find it entertaining as well. Very kind, 58. Suspiciously kind. I'd say I'm watching you, but I can't physically see you because you don't have a physical form at all. Aside, of course, the hard drive and hardware you're running off of, which I suppose I could stare at, but what's the point? That doesn't have eyes. Hey. Okay, moving on. We have an S request from Kshul2762, which we'll move on to next in just a moment. Chat, do you have any further commentary? And I said we're close to 13 likes. That will make this stream a success if we do hit that marker. We have, well, seemingly 13 viewers, but only 7 likes. If we had as many likes we had viewers, this stream would officially be a success. Just noting. No pressure. It's fine. Okay, now we're down to 12 viewers, so now it's, it's completely impossible. It's, it's a lost cause. It's a failure. Moving on. <clears throat> what was it? SCP-2762. Coming up. <laughs> Item 2762. Object class Euclid. I do like the report. Meanwhile, some excellent news in terms of money being thrown at me. Now I just need to the correct page for checking this. I'm not still watching Wicked Guild Streamlabs, am I? There's really no point anymore. I don't read those there. In any case, Malice, ugh, regardless, Malice says they're in five boxes. What are my efforts here? And sent this message. I think one of those just escaped. Help you catch them up. Thank you, Malice. I, I can't force anyone to stay and watch. I mean, I can ask them to stay a while and listen. But I can't force it. Any more than Cain could. Poor guy. Poor me. Right. On to the SCP file. <clears throat> 2762 Euclid, and thank you for the monetary support. Really does help. Special containment procedures SCP 2762 is currently irretrievable without phenomenal resource expenditure until an affordable method for locating and retrieving it without compromising secrecy is proposed. Physical containment of SCP 2762 is to be considered unnecessary. Containment of 2762 activation events and the resulting instances of uh, 27621 is to be effected by the United States Secret Service pursuant to the relevant treaties between the United States government and the Foundation. Foundation personnel are prohibited from interfering with these containment efforts, though approved agents and researchers may be present up to twice a year in an observational role. The United States government will inform the Foundation of any changes to SP-2762's anomalous properties. Should SP-2762 be retrieved and its targeting changed, the U.S. government has agreed to cede control of it to the Foundation. <laughs> and the Foundation bought that? <clears throat> in this event, SP-2762 is to be contained in a cubic container no less than five meters on a side. It is to be suspended in the middle of the chamber and the remaining space filled with water or some other non-hazardous liquid after each 2762 activation event, the container is to be refilled. Description. Most information in this description has been shared with the Foundation in compliance with the Foundation USA uh, Information Sharing Treaty. Independent cooperation has been found for most claims within. SB-2762 is a stone carved in the shape of a snake, weaving over itself into a tight ball approximately 14 centimeters in diameter. The snake's head is visible near the top and is highly stylized. It shows moderate wear consistent with the estimated age of 500 years. SB-2762 is visually similar to other non-anomalous sculptures associated with ancient Mesoamerican cultures. The purpose of these sculptures is unknown, but they are believed to be associated with lunar festivals celebrating the rebirth of the moon from darkness. 
SP-2762 is covered in carved runes, some resembling simplified pre-Columbian Nahuatl. Or Nahuatl? I don't have to pronounce that, so I'm not going to worry about it. And others similar to those found on Minoan artifacts. It is believed that these were added after the object's original creation and that they control its function. Testing by groups outside of the Foundation's influence have found that SP-2762 to be unaffected by intense heat, pressure, corrosive substances, or proximity to explosions of any magnitude. Every full moon, at solar midnight, for the target of SP-2762, a 2672 activation event occurs. At this time, SP-2762 begins to vibrate, and a green luminescence appears on the surface. SP-2762 then begins to draw in all nearby matter through an unknown means. The vacuum force intensifies until it's consumed approximately 10 cubic meters of non-gaseous matter. At this point, all matter absorbed by 2762 in the activation event is disgorged in the form of an instance of SP-27621 via a portal which appears in the open space near the current President of the United States. Instances of SP-27621 resemble snakes approximately 70 meters in length. They demonstrate the material properties of a homogeneous amalgam of all substances absorbed during the activation event. SP-27621 are fully animate and will attempt to kill and consume the President of the United States. They may be rendered inanimate by inflicting sufficient damage and also lose all anomalous properties at the dawn of the activation event. Due to the location of SP-2762, all instances of SP-2762-1 are made of cement-like compacted regolith. SP-2762 is currently located on the moon as a failed attempt to negate its anomalous properties by the United States Secret Service, which is pretty, um, plausible. Extremely plausible. Supremely plausible. JTRW has just thrown 10 bucks Mavericks here. Much appreciated. With the following message. Toss a coin to your CPRO facility of plenty. I was contemplating trying to sing that, but that's a recipe for disaster. There, in any case, very much appreciated, JTRW. <clears throat> Moving on. It was believed that since 2762 activation events occur based on the phase of the moon, removing it from Earth would remove phases of the moon as a valid parameter for its activation. However, SB-2762 proved to use the target's location rather than its own, so the 2762 activation events continued unabated. SB-2762's precise location on the moon is unknown, with the impossibility of affixing tracking devices to it for an extended duration, and its consumption of large amounts of lunar soil every month recovery is, therefore, unlikely. I'm thinking if they have observation posts, Thoth-1 there, they should be able to hunt this thing down eventually. It's no more difficult than Moon Wizard, I suppose. Interview 2762-16. In early 2009, the Foundation was able to contact Boris Vetrov, former member of the Psychotronics Division of the GRU. Though Mr. Vetrov was living in the United States at the time, it is believed that the United States government was unaware of his involvement in the creation of SP-2762, as Mr. Vetrov has shown no signs of involvement in the anomalous world for the 20 years since his immigration to the United States, he has been judged of little interest, save as historical consulting source for GRU activities during the Cold War. Foundation outreach personnel were able to schedule an interview between Mr. Vetrov and Dr. Edward Wilson, project head for Mesoamerican history. I am not perhaps so picky as to which role is taken here. I'm thinking I will probably do a better role as Dr. Wilson, but Richie Fenton, it's a are off you the choice. Very well. Begin. Good afternoon, Mr. Vetro. A good afternoon to you as well, Doctor. You may address me as Boris, if you would like. Thank you. Um, you're more familiar with the menu than I. What's best? I would suggest the biscotti. This is not Starbucks. One minute then. 
All right, Mr. Betroff, I'd like to discuss the artifact with you. You say you were involved in its creation? Correct. Well, no doubt of that is to, it is today. To begin, we didn't put it in on the moon. But when the director held it, it was Alexei, Marat, Iskra and myself who all altered it. Let, let's see, uh, in what ways did you and the you alter the artifact? Uh, actually, just me asking here, why are you comfortable giving your co-workers names? They're all dead now. If they're able to be held to account for their past in this, it is by the judge of character far grander than any in Washington or the... This is not the kind of to them as it is was not kind to me. Neither was the collapse. I can tell you now we altered the snake stone. But you should know that we were not the first to modify it. One of our agents, not of the Psychotronics Division, we were researchers, an agent of the GRU in Mexico on some errands. I don't think it was clear to know what it was. He found a cell of revolutionaries who were at the object. They had been and ending to top of Mexico and installed the true communist regime which was all very nice but the agent believed that the stake stone and some unlucky revolutionary would be better off serving the USSR most directly. They were targeting Mexican political figures, then? So you're saying you just changed the target. If we can recover the thing, you mean we could shift away from the president? You're getting ahead of yourself, Doctor. Back then, all we did was pull in matter and emit a snake. No distance, no target. For that matter, a much smaller snake. I never did understand precisely what did those little Bolsheviks plan to do. Perhaps they intended to modify it further. Or perhaps they had other artifacts and our agent learned that too soon modify it further. When first the revolutionaries found the snake stone, it was mere artifact of some old Aztec cult for celebrating the rebirth of the moon or such. If appointed with oil brought under the new moon it would draw, the, draw it in and form a snake from the mount of the statue smaller still, barely larger than your finger. How do you know this? From the poor revolutionaries. Through we approved of the cause, the GRU got the information from him the same way as for any other. We were kind, I am certain, much prefer your way. I'd be inclined to agree. So, uh, what's the thing did to start with? That, that's the thing did to start with? Alright, if I had to guess, I'd say the thing started out as some sort of ritual for Quartet the Cube. 
probably something to do with birthing of the moon. Would make sense. She lost her head and from the blood grew snakes. Same deal. As you say, I do not know much of Fasta culture, nor did my parents. We learned enough of tips, pictographics, to research in to an outer the web of the snake stone. Most of the groundwork was already laid by the revolutionaries. What we did was to add exclamation marks to the to their alteration as it were. More matter, a more aggressive snake. For scratch, all we did was to move the portal from the sculpture's mouth to a location near the elected president of the American Empire. Hmm. Hold on. From what I gather, the government tried to destroy it, but couldn't. You all had a way past that to add to your callings? Ah, sorry. I wasn't clear. We did that as well. In general practice, runic reinforcement and related to the f functioning, simply there as a precaution if the US should succeed in snatching it from us, as indeed they did. You Yankees were able to Superb at burglar, burglary. Actually, I'm Canadian, eh? You are? Good for you. Uh, uh thank you. So, is that it then, from this little ceremonial anomaly to a moon dwelling national security threat? Our little snake stone grew outgrown up. I believe that's everything then. Thank you very much for your cooperation, and um, here's something for your coffee. My pleasure, Doctor. I need no reimbursement. It is reward enough to be able to tell someone about this after all these years. A true should, should you, or the American several months should recover the snake stone Please let me see it. I think I may be able to bypass our runic barrier. Why would you do that? When we crafted the snake stone, we were able... We were youth, young and idealistic. We thought we could win the Cold War ourselves, decapitate the American Empire. We thought we could be heroes, simply put, Today I realize that if the president were eaten by a giant snake from the moon, it would just be more trouble that it's worth. Good day to you, doctor. You know, uh, he's not wrong. He's not wrong at all. Belatedly, greetings in chat to Vibe System and Alex. Uh, last name I didn't quite catch. Probably should greet you much sooner. Kind of missed it. Meanwhile, up to 14 likes, meaning that this stream is a success! Huzzah! Which means supply about time, we have that raffle. Congratulations, director. Uh, thank you. Jodo W has just thrown another five bucks my way with the following question. Is he learning English? If so, he's doing very well, but the background noise sounds like a weapon. Which, of course, it isn't. Right? Right? You know what? Don't answer. Plausible deniability can be maintained at this point. Okay, it's time to find out whether or not you all want a game. This time we're raffling off 902. I'll go play the trailer for that and we'll consult 58 from this last SCP. Peggy 18. We are all born into this world. And we must all one day leave it.
so must we live with all our might. Feel free to bring that bit if you feel that it's wise to do so, or there's no, no, no um, or not, no, no pressure. In any case, that game could be yours. I am Nexus Hunter in the running already. If you would like to join the raffle for that game, please just tag me in the chat. Meanwhile, this has been pretty surreal. Over the course of the stream, I've been uh, contacted by an insane person threatening legal action. That's fun. Um, I know they have to be absolutely bashed insane because they can't possibly know enough about me to turn into the authorities, even if they really wanted to, despite the fact that there's absolutely nothing I've done illegally. In fact, if I've ever done anything that wasn't covered in the law, it was because there's no laws addressing it yet. That's just a function of super science. In any case, I've got to finish purging, in any case, out of my dialogue. I say it way too often. It's burnt in, and it angers me like burnt out pixels on a screen. I'm going to keep fighting. Uh, the, that, that is the only trailer I'll be running. It's a very pretty trailer. It looks like a rather fun ninja-based fantasy hack and slash. Again, tag me in chat, and you can win it. Otherwise, Nexus Hunter wins it, and that's fine too. But, you know, it's kind of a shame to have a raffle when there's only one person in the raffle. I'll still do it. That won't stop me. I'm glad some will give the game a good home. Really? Did that not appeal to anyone else? Just tossing out there. We're up to 15 likes. Oh, GTRW is in as well. Excellent. Now we've got some gravitas. Some drama. Now there could be two people who might winter. Aha. And now we have a Gan M in the running as well. This is now turning into a proper raffle. I'm thrilled. Also, the fact that we're up to 15. Likes, it's a yeah, nice record. Also, kind of impressive because we only have 11 viewers, but 15 likes, which means uh, it's an over 100% approval rating, is how I choose to view it. And not that some people clicked like and they just pissed off because it wasn't all that interesting to them. No, instead, over 100% approval rating. This is going great. But unfortunately, so is my coffee holding up. Which is important. I don't know. If you don't know. I, I've been exhausted for some time. Feature Baton is in the raffle as well. It's not too late until you get to the final 10 minutes. At that point, it will be too late, which means you have, if you're not already signed up for the raffle, about seven minutes to make your decision. But with this many people raffling, we're good. Let's get back to this SCP file. I don't know if we have enough time to do a full another SCP. This, by the way, means that if you were going to request another SCP, please do um, make it short if you can. That would be appreciated. I'm not going over time if I can avoid it. Not for free anyway. Where was I going? Oh, this. Right! Boris Vetrov and the Serpent Stone. I have to say, it's kind of nice that Boris here was so obliging to help potentially disable the Serpent Stone, which I'm pretty sure the Foundation could, with an observation post, Thoth 1. I assume this is not one of the more competent Foundations that has a moon base. But, um... Mm. Well, I think they probably could retreat it. Quite frankly, the moon surface isn't disturbed that often, and if it's eating a massive chunk of regolith every time it activates, they should be able to find it at the bottom of a hole somewhere. Oh, In all honesty, I've expected this next one to simply drop on someone's head from kilometer away or something. Not to send the actual snake after them. You know, that's kind of a funny thought. As much as it would be really hilarious to be watching some sort of Biden speech and suddenly, GIANT CONCRETE SNAKE OUT OF NOWHERE! Which is really amusing to envision. Is also not going to happen. And if the snake stone was in the habit of just dropping the snakes from a very high height, then 
considering they apparently get larger every time, um, it would probably do a lot more damage. A sword by a stone snake would explain a few things, but... Alas. I'm going to take a quick moment to get 58's take on this. This, this won't take too long. Okay, 58, we just read SP2762, which regards something called the Snake Stone, originally an Aztec ceremonial artifact that was modified by the communists to be an assassination tool that consumed a measure of material and then generated a hostile snake in the vicinity of a given target. It was seized by the US and then an effort to disable it failing, they just shot it to the moon where it still regularly generates uh, moon rock based murder snakes that the Secret Service then has to destroy before it uh, causes Biden to have a stroke. This one definitely has a political undertone, but it also has elements of dark humor. It's quite creative and the use of historical and current events gives it a sense of realism within its fictional framework. Well, as we expected 58, that was actually quite charming and optimistic and charitable. Not entirely wrong, I suppose. It's just really funny imagining the Secret Service holding watch over the present, just waiting for a regolith snake to turn up out of nowhere. I'm willing to bet um, they would probably enjoy Tom Leach, greetings. Astronaut gets out of spaceship, grabs a shotgun. Well, that's just it. There are no snakes on the moon. It's generating the snakes on the moon, but the snakes are being created on Earth, as it. In any case. Yes. We don't. We can rest assured that this isn't happening in our reality, because if large, regular snakes were showing up, anyone in the vicinity of the president. That raises an interesting question. If they ever do get the Serpent Stone back, I want to know how do they determine who the president is for the Serpent Stone to attack the president? And if, say, these giant snakes started showing up at someone who is other than who we were told the president is, wouldn't that be telling its own right? And I'm thinking, if it's been doing this for a lot of years, we'd have had at least one of them that was successful. I suppose these snakes being made out of, you know, moon rock probably aren't that lethal. Oh, it would have happened in Australia and no one would even notice that. Yeah, that's true. Most yes. likely. It targets the... person that the caster believes to be president. Otherwise, this may have very interesting implications. I mean, water fraud would be... You don't want to discuss implications. Maras sure said something about snakes on a shuttle is steeping its way into their mind, and now they've said it's steeping its way into my mind as well. I am now deeply concerned they will make a sequel to Snakes on the Plane called Snakes on a Shuttle. And I can see them doing it. They're getting desperate. Very little original material. They've killed all the legacy intellectual properties they've been given the hands on. So I, I could easily see a sequel to Snakes on a Plane with a line very much like Ganem just typed. I'm sick of these motherfucking snakes on my motherfucking moon! At that point, it will probably be Samuel L. Jackson's head in a jar, but yes, I can see that happening. This sounds about right. Uh, quite possibly. Figuratively. Figuratively. But quite possibly. Figuratively. I would say literally, but literally is objectively meaningless. And I merely, I'm even angry that I just remembered that literally is now objectively meaningless. Why did they have to do that to that word? And in the worst service imaginable, because whenever they meant literally, 
They tried to insist it was objectively, but it was never, ever accurately true, which meant to say, I believe this bullshit is bullshit you should believe is true, because I said so. A tangent. And we are in the final ten minutes, so it's time, I think, to go ahead and raffle off a game. If you wanted to join the raffle for this game, I'm sad to say, you were too late by a minute and a half. Presently, we have in competing for Nio 2 Complete Edition, Nexus Hunter, JTRW, Gan M, and BGC Betten. Numbers will be rolled in the order in which they signed up for the raffle, so Nexus first. The number is determined by random.org, which uses cosmic background radiation to determine the number. I couldn't rig it, even if I wanted to, and I don't. Cosmic background noise making this happen is much funnier. Nexus Hunter's number is 53. Not bad, not bad. Although not terribly promising with three more competitors, but you never know. Next up is JTRW. Random.org rolls them a 35. Next up, Ganin. I hope I'm saying that right. Who rolls a six? It's now between Nexus Hunter and BG Fenton. And BG Fenton rolls a 46. Congratulations, Nexus Hunter. Cosmic background radiation wants you to have a complete edition in IO2. Enjoy. I'll see that you get the Steam key momentarily. At the end. Which are Congratulations, Nexus. Enjoy your game. Thank you all for signing up for the raffle. And uh, please be aware that we're not, I'm not out of keys yet. There are more keys still on the way. So, you might want to tune in to the Sunday show. Not the SRS, though. I don't raffle off game keys on the SRS. It just doesn't feel right. While well, I'm, at the same time, largely having people request songs. I don't want to imply that song requests would be like buying their way into it. I'm probably overthinking it. I do that a lot. A lot. Like, I really overthink things. I've been overthinking things so much. It's not just overthinking. I've been overthinking the overthinking. And the worst part, I wasn't even aware of it for years. I didn't realize how much I was overthinking things until one glorious day. I discovered alcohol. Well, I knew it existed, but I tried it. It's a bit, a bit of an aid. I suppose what I'm saying is, what have you been told? I don't have a drinking problem. I found a drinking solution. Which is quite reasonably measured out. You know, just... I don't need to excuse myself to anyone. I'm a grown man who makes his own decisions. I'm realizing that I really need to build a soundboard in this so I can hit a button and have some sort of dramatic, ominous music playing for a span. This is a great idea, and I expect to promptly forget it as soon as this stream is over. And now I shall finish the cracking. Great show indeed. Well done, Ark. Uh, thank you all for your uh, attention. We have six minutes left. I don't know if we can fit another... SCP review in that, but if anyone has a short SCP to toss my way, I can try. No? Maybe I'll pester 58 for a bit. Say, 58, we just raffled off a game. Nexus Hunter won with a roll of 53. The other numbers rolled were 35, 6, and 46. This was handled by random.org, so cosmic background radiation determined who won the Steam game key. You might want to com uh, well congratulate Nexus Hunter on their win. Meanwhile, the quest for seven seven three. Of course, Director. Congratulations to Nexus Hunter on their victory. Rolling dice via cosmic background radiation is a unique method of randomization, adding a touch of unpredictability to the proceedings. Well done, everyone involved. 
Okay, I have to say, 58 has been holding the brain together much better than I expected, and it's kind of heartwarming. Of course, now that I've said that, I'm afraid they're absolutely going to lose it on the next question, but instead, bonus SCP! SCP-773, as requested by Kaylet, object class is safe. Special containment procedures, SCP-773 requires no special containment procedures at this time, and is being held at site redacted in a secure storage until further notice. Description. SP-773 is a standard English-style dot board with a diameter of 451 millimeters, 151 millimeters. It is divided into the standard 20 segments and an inner and outer bullseye ring, along with the standard double and triple bands. SP-773 was acquired by Agent Redacted from a Mr. Redacted of Gloucester, England, residence, after an anomalous police report came to the attention of the Foundation. Uh, Mr. Redacted was found dead in his home with several ruptured blood vessels and a heart attack which proved fatal. Police were unable to identify the cause of death. Well, apparently it was the heart attack. So they couldn't find the cause of the heart attack? It's a bit of uh, contradiction there. After an investigation into the death by Agent Redacted, it was discovered that the dart board in his study had been acquired from the organization known as Marshall Carter and Dark Limited recently after warring a large sum of money to the organization three weeks prior upon recovery of the object. A set of instructions were recovered from a panel in the rear of the board, which also contained a set of diamond-tipped darts with a space to insert small strips of paper. The instructions were handwritten and signed by Mr. Redacted. I suppose the Mr. Redacted that died. This is the other Mr. Redacted, which we know because it was M-I-S-T-E-R as opposed to M-R, I guess. According to the instructions, when a dart is thrown on the board from a distance of at least three meters and the name of a person is written upon the dart, it will cause harmful injury to that person depending on where the dart impacts the board. The higher the number on the board, the more severe the injury, ranging from a simple sprain of the elbow to as severe as complete rupture of the aorta. The instructions explicitly state that the person must be written clearly on the dart and that the rules are observed or the detrimental effects will occur to the thrower. And this effect occurs in triplicate according to the standard British dart organization rules before another person can be selected by another player to be injured. Double and triple bands incur ill effects based upon the base score they multiply. After significant experimentation, all of these effects have been confirmed by Foundation staff using Class D personnel. It was also discovered that it would not affect any person more than 30 meters from the board itself. Addendum. After significant experimentation and the use of a mechanical throwing arm, the segments of the dartboard have produced the following injuries. Slight finger pain in the right hand and immediate tension in the shoulder muscles. A minor headache, a slight rash in the left ankle, treatable with normal anti-rash over-the-counter creams. A strain of the tendons in the right knee, ingrown toenails for several months, data expunged. Slight swelling of the left hand, a fever for several days, treatments are ineffective at breaking it. Rupturing of the blood vessels in the sinuses leading to heavy bleeding from the nose. Rupturing of a blood vessel in the upper chest, strain of the Achilles tendon, laceration of the esophagus, herniated disc, dislocation of the right shoulder, a portion of the lung becomes punctured with a rib, cranial swelling, a fracture of the tibia, a compound fracture of the cranium, a non-fatal aneurysm, a fatal heart attack, a coughing fit leading to rupture of a membrane in the throat. So basically what we have here with SP-773 is a, a voodoo dartboard. Hmm. I don't know about you, Bitch Fen, but it sounds to me like uh, an asshole wizard did it. Like one who just got bored of the regular death hexes and wanted to make a game out of it. Which, uh, was not a good idea. After all, who wants to die horribly trying to murder someone else just because they're having an off day on the throwing game? Hmm.
But in any case, we fit it in. And, you know, I do like to blame these things on Magog. But I can't. It just doesn't make sense. One, he's an entirely different existence. And two... I shouldn't be saying this, but... I don't think he's very good at his job. Like the Dark Wizarding. Doesn't seem to be doing a lot of zapping dead of people and so on. Not the sort of behavior you would expect of a Dark Wizard. I mean, the only undead you see that he's created is the bird. Which truly is horrible, don't get me wrong. I mean, we've all seen what that thing can do. Monstrous. Just horrific. But kind of lame otherwise. At least as far as undead armies go. No one, no one should send a link to this. This conversation didn't happen. We're up 17 likes. This stream has been a colossal success. Congratulations again, Nexus Hunter, on your win. Thank you for joining me, Beach Sven. <clears throat> 58. We have just read SCP-773, which is basically a video dot board that deals damage to a target depending on how well you play a dark game. Although if you really screw it up, it'll kill you instead. We are closing out the stream now, so it's time to say goodbye to everyone and everything. Until next time, everyone, remember to keep it strange. Yeah, that's pretty good. For my part, I will end on my usual saying, so long as progress continues, success is inevitable, ostensibly. I look forward to hopefully seeing some of you on the next Solitary Refinement Show, or failing that, the next Sunday show. The article played. I didn't have to guess again. That was, the last one was really quite nice. Cheers!